Hi everyone and welcome to day two of Arthropalooza week. We're so excited to have you here and can't wait to show you what's next. This video is all about beetles. Beetles are important and interesting for many reasons. There are more different species of beetles than any other animal and they are found everywhere except for the ocean and Antarctica. They're also an important food source for a lot of animals, including birds, reptiles, arthropods and other beetles, skunks, raccoons, bears, even people. Beetles and their larvae are also decomposers. They consume rotting wood, plants, animals, and even dung. They are also pollinators. They are the earliest pollinators and they still play a role in pollinating today. Diane Olson, a volunteer with the Highland Center, is here to tell you all about beetles and explain a fun way to make a beetle of your own. Hi, my name is Diane Olson and I'm a volunteer here at the Highland Center and I'll be talking about some fun things today. Okay, I imagine most of you know what these are. They're beetles. These are rhinoceros beetles and they're pretty common around here. If you look closely at a male, you can guess why they're called rhinoceros beetles. But it's only the male that has the horn. And so I looked at the two specimens I brought in today, or two live ones rather, and they don't have horns. I'd like to show you a few others that are common around here. One that we have is the longhorn beetle. And you can see why it's called a longhorn beetle, although these are actually antenna. This is a pretty good size one. The longhorn beetles can be, be pests because they like to lay their larvae in trees. I'm sorry, lay their eggs in trees. And uh, when the larva hatches, then sometimes they attack the tree and, and can actually kill it if it's not a, a um, healthy tree. If they get too many of them in there. If they get a few, they're fine. The uh, nice thing about the um, longhorn beetle is that the longhorn beetle also likes to eat um, bark beetles. So when we have an overabundance of bark beetles, we've got a, a solution from nature. Another one that we have over here is the Hercules beetle. Look how tiny the head is. That's it. And it's got this big horn that comes around. This is a male and it's just kind of pretty because it's got all this fuzzy stuff on the bottom. This is called a Hercules beetle because it's the strongest beetle in the world for its size, strongest animal in the world for its size. This um, beetle can hold up to four, or lift up to four pounds. Now that doesn't mean it can move very well, but just stop and think. This beetle weighs one tenth of an ounce. That can is almost a pound and it can almost lift four pounds. Of course, it can't go anywhere, but just imagine, it could lift that one can probably fairly easily. Another one that we have over here is a Crescina gloriosa. Crescina gloriosa is a June beetle, and that means it comes out, it's, it's the adult it comes out in June. And if you're ever sitting around outside in, in June, and you have a light bulb on, you may find these because they like, they are attracted to the light and they like to come to the light. And they're so pretty. Another pretty one we have around here is called the uh, pleasing fungus beetle. And if you stop and think about the name, it'll tell you exactly what it is. It's called pleasing because it's pleasing to the eye and you can guess what it eats. We have some of those around here at the uh, Highland Center for sure. I'm sure we have the other ones as well, but I know I can, we, that uh, kids have found these down in the area by the, uh, the play area, so kids keep an eye out. You never know, you might find one down there. Um, some beetles, we know, um, have been misnamed. Uh, a couple of examples are the ladybug, which is actually a lady beetle, and the stink bug, which is the darkling beetle. Now, obviously, the stink bug has a good reason for its name because yes, it does put out an odor when people get too close. The thing that most people don't know 
is that the stink bug is one of, or the, the darkling beetle is actually one of the few beetles that can't fly. Its um, wings have over a long time, period of time, have been com become fused. And uh, so it's just one hard shell there. And the reason for that is because it helps it to uh, save water because this beetle lives oftentimes where it's dry. So what makes a beetle a beetle? Well, the most characteristic thing about it is that it has a hard shell on the outside. It's like armor protecting it and giving it support. It has two sets of wings. And if you look here, you'll see that what this, this lady, you can see the ends of her wings. She's trying to get them up and she's gonna fly if she can. Or she's gonna tuck them back in. Good, she's gonna stick around a little bit longer. The, the outer wings are called the elytra, and the inner wings are nice and soft, while the outer wings are very, very hard. They're having their own little party there, I think. Um, so I wanted to show you a picture of what it looks like when they fly. What they do is they pop these wings up, and then they fly with the, the um, inner wings, which are very soft. And the inner wings, if you notice, they're longer, and they're quite large, longer than the elytra. So what they have to do when they um, get done flying is they kind of flop, they kind of fold them up like origami, and it goes right underneath, so it's completely hidden underneath the beetle, and the outer ones then protect the inner ones. Uh, the other thing that, that beetles have are chewing mouth parts rather than sucking which allows them to eat a wide variety of food. They can eat plants, uh, not all of them. Some of them eat plants, some eat animals, some eat fungus, some eat dung, and some eat dead things like um, dead animals or whatever. Beetles are insects that go through four stages of development. The egg, the larva, I call them baby beetles, the pupa and the adult. You've seen the adult stage of the rhino beetle. Here, is the baby beetle or larval stage of another common beetle in our area called the darkling beetle, which we've already talked about. You can often find them sold in pet stores as food for lizards. They're called mealworms, but they really are beetle larvae. And here are some other forms that, that larvae take. One is, is the grub, and this is a very common one, and you'll find these underground usually. Some of them live for years. The um, rhinoceros beetle is one that has a grub like this. And the grub itself lives under the ground, um, or yeah, under the ground for three years before it becomes an adult. As an adult, it only lives for several months. As when it's a grub, it will be eating um, detritus and uh, other dead things usually. But some of them also will attack plants. Depends on the beetle. If you would like to make a beetle, I'm going to show you a real easy way to make a yummy treat for yourself. You need two marshmallows. If you have big ones, better, but this, the regular size work. You need six of the um, paper clips, and I'll show you how to move those around in a minute, and a couple of, of toothpicks. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take, oh, and you're going to probably want some water because what you want to do is you want to start out with a pair of scissors and you're going to cut one of the marshmallows in half and then you're going to cut it in half again and as you can see it's already getting sticky so I'm going to take my let's wipe that off a little bit then I'm going to cut this just a little bit smaller because this is going to be the middle part of my beetle. Okay, so there we've got, oh, and the best thing is you can eat the leftovers too. Yum. This is what I call a yummy treat. Okay, so here we go. So I've got a real sticky part. I'm going to put it onto my big one. And so there's the middle part of the beetle. And then I'm going to take one of these really tiny ones. I think I'm going to cut it even just a little bit smaller. For the head. And then you can stick it on again. Now you can kind of mush them around to get the head to stick out just a little bit if you'd like. 
And then if you're really concerned, you can take a toothpick and stick it in the middle. So it's all going to stay together. Then we're going to take two tiny little pieces. Whoops. That is a tiny head, but it'll work. doesn't matter. Beetles have very small heads. The nice thing about this craft is it takes no time, and it doesn't matter how, how it turns out because they're all looking good. All right, so there's one, and there's the other. All right, so there's the body we have. Now, let me show you how we do the, two, the um, paper clips. So put the, the outside piece down at the bottom, and I'm just going to bend it out, and then I'm just going to bend it down, and I'm going to bend it the other way, so I have sort of a Z shape. So there's one of my legs. The, this thick part is going to be going right into the beetle. Or I'm sorry, the marshmallow. That's the body of the beetle. So you got one. How many legs do they have? Oh yeah, six legs. I remember now. Two. Three. This is the hardest part of the whole thing, and if you get an adult to help you, it might make it even a little bit easier to do. Not the sticking in, but the bending part is the hard part. This is pretty easy, actually. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to try and stand up our little guy, or gal, as the case may be. nice thing is you can scoot these legs around any way you need to to get them to stand up. And if they don't stand up, it doesn't really matter. But there you go. Now you've got your beetle. Now, if you really want to get a little bit extra, what you can do is you can take a little bit of frosting, which is just powdered um, sugar, which is granulated, or I'm sorry, um, powdered up, and with a little bit of, of milk or water, and you can make the wings on it. And if you really get fancy, you could actually decorate them if you have a few little sprinkles around the house. And there's your beetle. And you, I put on this two little tiny dots for the eyes on that one. And the best part after you're all done, you get to eat it. So keep a lookout for beetles as you go on a hike or a walk. And when you find one, stop if you have a minute and take a look at it and see what you can discover about it and then step around it and continue on your way. And have a great day. Thank you for attending day two of Arthur Palooza Week. We hope you learned something and had a lot of fun. We'd love to see your marshmallow beetles or any beetles you have seen this summer. Please send images of your beetles to enixon at highlandcenter.org to be featured on our website and Facebook page. If you enjoyed this video, please consider donating or becoming a Highland Center member by clicking the associated text found with this video. I'll see you tomorrow for day three of Arthur Palooza Week.